removing it, it's creating a mouse an interface. Uh, you can create a mouse to sit there and go one by one pixel in a circle. Somewhere just off the screen or just on the bottom. It's not going to interfere with anything, but it will prevent screen savers from coming on. It will keep everything active for the user not to run. Um, auto run disable does absolutely nothing on this side. Some of the newer interesting areas that come into play, USB fuzzing. Again, the device drivers are designed for hardware. A mouse only does certain things. The driver says is written to a specification that you're only going to do the following. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to go anything. This is what the mouse is going to do. And the drivers are actually set to that. Well, guess what? I can now change that by this design and say, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to do something out of bounds. Uh, and this becomes some of the ability to actually fuzz the devices using uh, a simple interface. And again, blue screens are really easy to do in generating uh, this function. And you could, you could go generate any of the hid functions that are actually there and you discover that most of the drivers are not very well written. Again, they're standard hardware drivers. I, I know how the hardware is going to perform. Here's what I'm going to accept as its inputs. Uh, and figuring the hardware is going to do the bound checking uh, for a lot of this. Um, USB 3.0 uh, supports DMA, direct memory access. Uh, for those that are familiar with DMA, just say this is added to the same functionality of FireWire interfaces and PCMCIA interfaces. So if you know some uh, old exploits that have been around for that, guess what? They're now going to be done for USB on, on that side of it. So you're able to do all sorts of really, really malicious things uh, with a simple side of a key on that side of it. So that becomes uh, definitely some of the interesting aspects uh, and capabilities uh, going forward uh, in this area. Um, again, what can be done? And I sometimes feel like the cat more than often um, that's there. Um, you can disable external USBs. The problem is docking stations and other devices that, hey, hey, I have four USBs now. Guess what? I plug into a docking station. Oh, your keyboards don't work anymore. Thank you for playing. It's very hard to integrate that into an organization. Uh, my favorite is the USB glue. I actually don't know if this is a humorous thing or that's actually a product. I'm trying to order a stick of it to see if I can actually get it. But again, it's not out of common for people to put epoxy and other types of resins inside the USB to keep them from actually functioning uh, on that side of it. They understand the issues on the security side of this is becoming a common area there. USD device management, group policies, I know it's a dirty word in some cases, but it also does allow certain functions to be actually pushed down to the action. Um, we also talked about third party applications. It's not a really um, difficult to write a trivial program that would actually say, hey, you're not allowed to have two keyboards plugged into there at one time, you have, or you have one single HID device, why do you need two? Uh, and you can prompt and disable the other one on, on, on the capability, as well as the OS monitoring the control aspects of this over and over again. So it's, a, it's definitely an ongoing issue um, that's there. It's something that is now just being exploited. I've seen about three other talks based upon the same thing. So I'm thinking they got Jason's card. It's about the same time we did. Uh, and again, it's a new frontier in regards to this. Uh, it becomes a very easy, uh, you never thought about somebody walking around with a keyboard and plugging it into systems and running commands. Now you've got, all I have to do is plug this one device in and when it's done, unplug it and let it run. Um, it gives a whole different flexion of, of physical access and control and other form factors to be able to do exploitation on that side. And that's all I have. I've got about five minutes for questions. Yes. Can you not stop the No, because, well, you can do it through GPO or some of the other policies that are there, but all, a lot of the human interface drivers are already preloaded into the application that's actually there. And so it just recognizes it as another USB keyboard in that aspect of it. So it's really difficult to, to perform that function unless you create policy to say, don't load these drivers in that subset of that. But you'd, you'd affect all USB keyboards if you were to do that. You can disable USB keyboards, but you lose them all at once. So along the same lines, the, the sample cards that you got, did that actually install a driver or did you use the native Windows driver? Use the native Windows driver. So, no. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the question was that uh, when you got his card from the major financial institution, uh, did it install a driver or not? And, and Jason's point is no. It, it basically used the drivers that are built into the OS. Yeah, it initialized, you know, initialized the device with a built-in driver. There was nothing extra load. It just worked. Just like it would if you went and bought a keyboard and came home and plugged it in. Left side, black shirt. Uh, so, oh, question. Uh, go ahead. Repeat I'm sorry. The question. So, to repeat the question, how do you, how could you detect what OS is running? Right. So again, proof of concept. We didn't actually. We weren't able to get that far with the limited time that we had to to, to put everything together. But um, what what I was what we were conceptualizing is the ability of being able to perhaps load if you could leverage it as another driver or in fact t perhaps try to take advantage of the fact if auto run is not disabled to run something just to simply check and then call a specific routine that would then load the 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 uh the hid driver and then would you know run a specific call or sp the specific function within the code that f that was written for that US, uh, os like for example if it was xp you wouldn't want the extra clicks for uac because you know that it's not there Exactly. Correct. Yes. Uh, it's it's kind of complex, and there's a lot of nested logic in there, but technically possible, we think. Yeah, and again, a lot of this is just you're, you're streaming inf input information off of that. So again, you, uh, to to Paul's point, you could see about. Uh, potentially a status of doing something back onto the driver uh, to load something else uh, in the form factor. You, you said it was two parts, or is that both? Okay. Uh, there's one other question. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so the question is, is are some of the devices, uh, like these Tinsy boards or anything else, uh, multiple devices that hold, uh, again, uh, combo drives, uh, USB drives, or some of the other ones? Uh, I personally didn't see any like that. We, we, we went for the low-hanging fruit, the cheapest board we could get out there just to get it running. The, the Tinsy is capable of, of multiple. So you, you can do mass storage and... Uh, I think it's got a... There's no reason we couldn't split it in half. I think these are 128. 256. 256 meg chips, chips. so there's no reason you couldn't split it up. Okay, okay. question. Um, you could do wireless, you can do ethernet, you can do ethernet, you can do a lot of other uh, functionality built into that. Again, a lot of anything that's based on USB now becomes uh, prior uh, functions. A again, other things such as USB hubs, operate very strangely <laughs> when another USB hub is plugged in, and how do they find which one's connected to where? Um, there's, there's all sorts of little things as these, as these boards can produce that can change the way things are actually configured. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year. Next, Next year, year, yeah. One of, the, one of the issues about two years ago, um, they did an exploit for wireless keyboards based upon um, the Bluetooth, and again, it uses Bluetooth. It uses the um, L2CAP interface to go back and forth, but under that L2CAP interface is the HID that's actually plugged into. So it becomes the same functionality uh, and capability that's there. Uh, one more question. Anyone? Anyone? Going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.